Abby, thank you so much for being here. This is a moment I really, really um, desired for you to share with the public. And uh, this moment is actually dedicated to a present campaign that we're um, actually developing for the public, for the general public, occasioned by the subject healthy masculine uh, masculinity and how we redefine actually masculinity for the modern man. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for the invitation. It's not that easy to find a person, um, especially a man these days, who actually is uh, very serious to his own practice, spiritual practice, body, mind and emotional practice. So. Um, we're taking this time and actually trying to dive a little bit uh, with you into this matter. What does, uh, what does masculinity and actually healthy masculinity mean for a person like you, a yoga teacher? I think and I feel uh, exploration of masculinity is an ongoing process. We cannot put our finger on one definition and say this is where we need to reach and this is the definition of masculinity. Um, to me is masculinity is a lot about owning myself and not to get so much biased by the external impulses to, to function like certain standard to fit in in some standard but to really connect and listen to my inner voice and to feel okay with who I am and um, a lot of groundingness I'm definitely at uh, especially when I'm looking for myself yeah uh, it's about owning oneself it's, it's a lot about masculinity can you tell us more about what um, groundedness could actually practically mean for you and maybe for your um, clients and students? Well, to me, grounding would mean to remain true to the voice that I hear within myself and to walk the path which fulfills, which connects me to that meaning. And in this case, it's for me, it is, I'm a yoga teacher. I'm here to help people you know, learn yoga and them to get back to their essence. So I want to remain true to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what grounding to me, in, me means that, uh, that I am staying sincere to myself. Let's talk a little bit about the way masculinity was presented to you throughout culture, throughout role models in your family, and the way you redefined masculinity for your own needs and for your own vision upon what kind of person would you like to be in this world, what kind of man would you like to be in this world, how, how much different these two sides were and um, what did it take for you to actually redefine masculinity on your own grounds? I think there was a shift happening. Like when I was growing up, the definition of masculinity was the one who provides, you know, one who sustains the family, one who goes out, uh, does the daily job, brings food to the table, he's a masculine character. One who has a, a louder voice, one who dictates, uh, dictates terms and uh, the standards is masculine. But I think that is changing. Uh, I think in those days what we were noticing is uh, a male character is not uh, convert, uh, not perceived as masculine if they are in contact with their soft emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they have tears in their eyes, no, you are not man enough. You know, a man, a boy should not cry. Now, this kind of things we heard as a child. I think those are obsolete ideas. Now, a true man is one who knows their vulnerability, one who is ready to expose their vulnerability, their insecurity and how they are um, flowing through this uncertain time. Masculinity is not about certainty. Masculinity is knowing the way to flow with this changing time, with the, um, with the transition that is happening around us and within us. 
remain sincere with that inner voice? Uh, let's talk a little bit about how yoga practice actually uh, differentiates between postures, uh, uh, techniques, um, even breath flow between a uh, female or a feminine way of doing things and a masculine way of doing this, these things. So um, how does yoga actually grow a person into understanding Feminine, feminine values and masculine values and what's the dance between them that yoga proposes to, to practitioners? Um, the masculine nature and feminine nature, they always coexist. It's not one or the other. And this interplay uh, is what we call as a harmony in life. I can be firm once I have taken a decision and I, I work for that. But when I'm taking the decision, it should consult my totality, my deeper mm -hmm. aspect. And the deeper aspect would mean my plus, the qualities that are positive, that are prominent, that I exhibit very easily, as well as everything that I'm trying to put on the, under the carpet. So once we look into ourselves, into the totality, and then take a step and then we stand for what we stand for, is what I think is a very masculine quality in itself. Now, you also asked me if I understood properly that uh, what differentiate between our... Is there, a, is there a yogic feminine way? And I'm talking maybe of vinyasa yoga flow, that could be one way of getting into yoga practice. And is there a masculine yoga practice or more masculine yoga practice? And maybe here we come to Hatha yoga, which is more fire kind of uh, exercise and uh, speed kind of exercise, enduring kind of exercise. So do you differentiate in your own teaching between these two approaches or not? Um, if, if we look into the subject from really classical yogic scripture. The masculine nature is the consciousness, mm -hmm. which is static, which is the meta-awareness, so to say. Feminine energy is the creative, which is transforming, evolving. So anything that is fluid and is changing is a feminine energy, it's not masculine energy. Masculine energy is the one who is the drashta, this is the one, the word we use as the one who is observing everything that is happening in the, in the panorama, in front of him. So masculine yoga practice would be meditation actually. Mm -hmm. I think in the modern understanding we think that is very feminine practice to just to sit and to witness and to watch. It's quite on the contrary. And the feminine aspect is the movement, is the transforming practices in Kriya Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, the, when we are trying to move our energy from the lower energy center to the higher energy center, that is a feminine practice. Though uh, I, I usually refrain from presenting a yoga practice into a masculine or feminine way. If it were for you to share some um some ideas, some values, some words, some pinpoints uh, that you cherish and maybe you would be willing to also um, grow into your own students or into maybe your future children uh, or maybe if you were an educator and you had access to children, especially boys, which, which kind of values would you choose to present to to small children that would one day become, let's hope, healthy representatives of the masculinity. What appears, what comes to my mind in this moment is, first of all, in any form of education, we need to teach our kids a good emotional vocabulary. Mm -hmm. This is missing. When we were growing up, we were rarely asked how we are feeling. We were only told this is bad, don't do this, this is good, do more of it. But rarely we were asked, what were you feeling? 
what's happening to you at the emotional dimension. So educating our kids to understand, to identify what emotion they're experiencing is an important first step that will help them to evolve. Then, in that appears in my mind is, you know, in ancient India, there was this culture when the kid is about eight years old, he was sent or she was sent to live with the guru, with his teacher. And for the, till 25, he used to live with the teacher, which is known as Gurukul. So in literally, they was living in the house with the master. And they lived in a, all in the same manner, whether you are the son of the king or the son of the peasant, doesn't matter, you live in the same manner. And you learn a variety of skills, hands-on skills, not just archery, not just uh, learning some scriptures, but a variety of traits that you learned it. And these are the things that are missing in today's time. We are educating our kids only with the bookish knowledge and we say, okay, in your free time, if you, you, you can play piano, you can play violin, you can go for basketball and so on and so forth. Let the kid also learn how to be in the nature. Blending with nature is an important uh, criteria for a proper upbringing, which is, which we should, as a parent, should really insist on. Let them make them dirty by putting their hands on the soil. Let them walk in the forest by themselves. Let them also stay alone. This is a big uh, thing that is missing out. Now there's no kid is taught to stay alone. They need a gadget, a tablet, or something to, to you know, scroll, to look, you know. Always be doing something and doing their something. attention. So this, this so. doing something is happening too much. We have to teach our kids and also as an adult we need to practice being. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot, in today's time, if you, if you are a man, you take immense pride when you talk to your friend and say, oh, I'm very busy. We have glorified being busy a little too much. We have to learn that we also need to just be present. The non-doingness between two tasks, there should be enough time where you can contemplate and um, connect with your essence. Mm -hmm. See that the doing or becoming takes you to the next stage but by just being in one state and able to go into your deeper realm helps you to understand who you have become. Also need to enjoy you know, the, at the end of the day who, are, who, who I, have, I have become. Not only focus on the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. So anybody who wants to be more masculine should spend more time in embracing that who they are, they have become and then take the next step. I don't know if we have uh, enough time for the last question. No, I have. Um, you know, a lot of people who are not that deeply educated into what, what yoga is and uh, what it actually means, practicing it and where it does, um, where it comes from, specifically the Westerners, when you say yoga, you say tantra, and there's a big gap between these two terms. I just want uh, to ask you if you could please share a few thoughts about what's the relationship between tantra and yoga, what do they mean, and maybe, maybe share some ideas and try to clear out the, the bad reputation of uh, the word tantra that Westerners actually created. And that's because we do have a collection dedicated to this concept and it's called uh, Tantra. Wonderful. Tantra is misunderstood even in India. Tantra is misunderstood globally. So somehow I think that's the bad karma of Tantra that it is not clearly understood. And I think it's not clearly understood because it, has, it is such a vast umbrella under which yoga has developed. So, when we are looking through the lens of Tantra, this Tantric philosophy is very simple. In, it's like the ladder, the stair you take to go down 
the same stairs you can take to go up. So everything you are saying is prohibited or not good, they can become your stepping stone for a deeper understanding, for a spiritual understanding. Mm -hmm. And in this note, we can use every single thing that we normal people are experiencing in our day-to-day -day life. All the temptations, whether it's food, whether it's sex, whether it's the, the passion expressed in any form, they can help us to connect to the higher dimension. That's the, pretty much is the essence of Tantra. Now one said that, yeah, in the West, somehow this has happened, and I don't think it's a right to generalize, because there are people who have really understood what Tantra is. And there are excellent Western uh, authors and masters also. Uh, both Tantra and Yoga, Yoga is not only the physical movement or breathing or sitting in still sitting still in meditation so as tantra is not what you do after you remove your clothes and you burn some candles you know what i mean so this is not not what it is it's a lifestyle it's a philosophy on how am i gonna look at life and embrace life and to be in 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 a flow so that is what it is and um, this is what I'm teaching in my classes on yoga and tantra. The first thing they learn about is about their system, mm -hmm. the energies, the, the chakras, and how they can focus and how they can unlock those, those aspects, those dimensions of their being, which they preferred to keep under the carpet for years. You know? So, um, for everybody who's interested, where can we find out about your classes, about the, the information you're sharing with people? Where can we find you? Um, I am very much present in the social media, so they can look for me in the Facebook, Satyananda Yoga with Avi. They can look for my yoga school, Prakriti Yoga School in YouTube, in, um, in satyanandayoga.ro is the website. So yeah. Just yoga with Avi is good enough to ask to Google and they can find me. Thanks to the Google, of course. Thank you too, um, also for sharing this moment with us. And uh, let's hope for a future meeting and talking maybe some other important subjects for us all. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.